Hello everyone, and welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Monday, September 23rd, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. These readings are timeless, so just because it is dated for Monday the 23rd, it does not have to be just for Monday, okay? This can resonate with you at any time. Whenever you come across this message and it resonates for you, that is the message for you at that time, yes? Um, well, it is officially fall here in the United States and in the Northern Hemisphere, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, um, happy fall. <laughs> we had the equinox over the weekend. I believe it was the 21st. Um, that was exciting. And it's funny because I was working that day and I didn't even notice. Like I hadn't, I didn't even know. I went through the whole day and, and was not consciously aware of the fact that it was turning into fall. <laughs> and it's funny because it was like 80 degrees that day, but that's okay. Anyway, um, I hope you guys had a great weekend. So getting into the energies here. It's interesting because I wasn't sure if I should pull a, do a pre-shuffle or not, but um, things were coming out anyway. Uh, I didn't keep all of them, but I remember what they are. So as I was channeling the energies, um, the color for the day that I was getting is pink. Um, and I was feeling like um, compassion is really necessary right now in some way, some way, shape, or form. Um, but then I also uh, I saw a bit of green okay which can symbolize the heart chakra it could also symbolize money too especially with this ace of pentacles that's here now so then as i was pulling the pre-shuffle uh the six of pentacles did come out and then after that was the world with the page of swords but I, it was weird because i just i wasn't sure if i should be pulling a pre-shuffle or not but i just kept going with it um and it seems with that energy because it is connected to what we have here, but I want to talk about that first. It seems that with that Six of Pentacles, the world and the Page of Swords, there is some sort of energy of seeking. Um, I heard a new opportunity, um, a new maybe a new chance in love for you, or um, a new physical situation, something that is more reciprocal, something that is more balanced. I think, I feel like... The message in the collective right now um, is that there is this desire to have a more balanced and healthy situation. And that absolutely comes from the work that you've been doing on yourself, okay? in order to better yourself, be a better version of yourself. And so because of that, now you're in the process of seeking out a new opportunity while you're closing out the past, seeking out a new opportunity, a new relationship, a new job, a new career, a new home, whatever, um, in order to facilitate that balance, that harmony you found within yourself, um, further facilitate your desire for greater reciprocity in your life. Okay, so then we have these Ace of Pentacles here. And um, this is representing, in my opinion, this is representing the opportunity here, the new that you're trying to start. I do feel like for some of you, there's some sort of money that could be coming in because I did, I did, I did just hear that as I picked up this card. Um, but either way, there, there's a message coming through with this Ace of Pentacles in terms of spirit saying that you need to assure yourself that there is plenty of abundance. There is plenty. There is plenty, plenty, plenty for you to get what it is that you need, to do what it is that you want. To I'm hearing career specifically. Okay, you have temperance as the overall. You have temperance. And on the other side, you have the Four of Wands. Okay, so... Um, what this over oh, this actually yeah this is corroborating or, or confirming what I was saying about how you've reached a new level um, a, a new s stable more solid foundation within yourself 
um, that's allowing you to go after this or start this new opportunity, go after this new opportunity, create something new for yourself. I, I, did, I did just hear that. The thing about this side of the temperance card in this deck, this is the vice versa deck, but the thing about this side of the card is talks about not compromising who you've become or what you've learned um, for the sake of someone else or something like that, someone else, something else, okay? You have a lion and you have a bird here. This bird can, this could be like a what? An eagle, a hawk, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if that is a specific species of bird. I don't know, it doesn't matter. But the lion represents um, uh, standing up, your pride, maybe your ego. I'm hearing standing up for yourself. Um, the the bird represents you know intellect the things that you've learned all that kind of stuff and in the back you have this hanged man this is the hanged man thing that the hanged man would be hanging from and it's like don't compromise that it does talk about not backing down from who you know yourself to be who you've become oh my goodness and then looky here there's the six of pentacles <laughs> right underneath temperance and it was this side of the card that came out during this pre-shuffle stuff um and so this is where i'm getting the 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 image or the feeling that you know you're looking or overlooking your land your domain whatever your reality and you're trying and, it, and it's there's a question here how do i make things more balanced how do i keep reciprocity uh, or bring greater reciprocity into my life that's that's the question i'm hearing i'm feeling right now picking up on Okay, so with all that said, let's give a little reset here and we will get into the rest of the reading. I do really feel like this, this is a, a very strong feeling of the home, of your home is, uh, maybe there's, a, for a lot of us or a lot of, yeah, for a lot of those of us in the collective that I'm channeling for right now, we are very much trying to figure out how to, where to live, where to go, how to, I don't know. I don't know how to finish that statement. But this could very well have to do with your living situation, for sure. Okay. Alrighty, let's get to it. Hi Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Monday, September 23rd, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're gonna give this five shuffles. And then we will see what we've got for today. It is very warm all of a sudden. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, four, the collective. What would you like to discuss with us today, please, Spirit? What do you have to discuss with us today, too? Three. What would you like to discuss with us today, Spirit? Four. And a five. For our Monday, September 23rd. All right, guys, here we go. Let's see what we've got for today. Monday, September 23rd. Collective messages. What would you like to discuss with us today, Spirit? We're going to do one more pass on this. I don't know what has come out yet. My eyes are closed, but we will see in just a moment. I'm going to do this one more time here. Monday, September 23rd for the collective. Woo! Okay. Well, there you have it. Oh, goodness. Oh, that was a lot. Oh, there sure is a lot, isn't there? Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, we're going to stop there. 
Ooh. All right, we have the Nine of Pentacles here. There. And then on the other side, we have the Eight of Pentacles. Okay, so already there is, a, a, I'm hearing, diligent work has been done. And it does feel like it's you're continuing to do it. You're keeping, it's like you're keeping your momentum going here. Okay. Yeah, nine of pentacles, eight of pentacles. And it feels like this is just an energy of you continuing your craftsmanship, you continuing your craft of uh, continuing crafting your life, okay? That's what this feels like here. From a place of abundance, from a place of independence, autonomy, um, sovereignty, all that kind of stuff, okay? I really do feel like you've done a lot of great work here. Okay, and it's really beginning to pay off. And that really could, I feel like specifically, the biggest payoff that is coming through right now is mentally, okay? Like, it's almost as if your thoughts are starting to come into check here. And actually, it's interesting because I'm kind of feeling that with this King of Swords in reverse. That's interesting. And this, I believe this was the first card that fell out. Um, and it's separated from the rest of the cards here. So let's look at these. You have this, you have strength, you have the eight of wands, you have the king of wands. Ooh, you have death, you have the six of swords, the seven of cups, and the star. Okay. Very good. These are good energies here. The King of Swords is in reverse over here. Now, this could be someone else that you are releasing from your life, that you're moving away from, I, I heard specifically. And this could have been an individual that was... Um, Super critical is what I want to say. Overly logical, overly analytical. Um, might have been really difficult to deal with. It also, this, this King of Swords in reverse energy is also representing your thoughts, your mind. Um, and, and the biggest thing that I'm getting from this King of Swords in Reverse is you releasing the hold that your conscious mind may have had on your life. I heard specifically on your relationship, whatever that means for whomever that's for. Um, there's just like this overly critical energy that I'm getting from this King of Swords, but it's in reverse here, which means that that is being, well, it could mean that it's there's blockage, but um what i'm feeling here is that this was this is being released that's why it's in reverse here okay you have strength with the eight of wands and the king of wands now i do feel like this is you okay the individual that's watching this the individual that i'm channeling for i do feel like this is you and i feel like um it's these two energies are very connected between strength and the king of wands. There is an energy of um, having to face your fears, having to face society, having to um, I feel like face societal structures. Okay, in this side of the king of wands, you have um, you have this big a big snake, right, who represents. Um, the snake is a very wise individual, okay? Um, or a very wise energy. It's not a bad thing here. It's actually a good thing. And in, in, in the book, this is described as, this, the, the snake is described as the, um, how do I put this in words? Uh, it represents facing certain societal structures and, and, and social norms and whatnot and basically coming to your own conclusion about it. And that's what this is here with 
the devil also with temperance that came out in the pre-shuffle um, not compromising, not backing down, not le letting this devil energy stop you. Fear, like, uh, fear. Not allowing fear to get you down, not letting f allowing fear to stop you, not allowing some big, bad monster kind of come in and ruin your plans or wreck your plans. I <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Okay, and then you also have the Eight of Wands here, which uh, is representing clear and open movement, clear and open air. I really do feel like whatever it is you're going through right now, whatever phase or transition you're making, it's moving quite quickly. There also could be open lines of communication here. Travel may be involved also. You have death with the Six of Swords and the Seven of Cups. So oh, here, what this is saying is um, you're definitely going through a transition. And it's as if where once with the Seven of Cups energy I'm getting, where once you may have been kind of scared of all the different options and the and whatnot, and maybe, you know, not really knowing which way to go, maybe feeling kind of like blind or lost in the dark or something. Here, this, this is like reassurance. This feels better now. It feels like you're more open to the possibilities. You're more open to the to the to the ideas. I get a feeling of, especially with the star energy here. I get a feeling of working with the universe and in 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 and, uh, and being open to the plethora of ways that you or manifestations can, can can come forward, can come through. I really feel like there's an energy of not being stuck on a six, certain circumstance any longer. Okay, that's definitely what this Death and Six of Swords are talking about here. It also could be what this King of Swords energy is representing for those of you that are moving away from a certain individual or a certain situation or something like that. And there's brand new coming through here, which is really cool. Okay, that's not, that's not a bad thing at all. Okay, so let's go to the clarification now. Um, boop, 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 doo, doo, boop, doo, doo, doo. Okay, I'm gonna give this three shuffles, and then I'm just going to, I'm just gonna pull the clarification give you a better understanding because this is where you are now okay so like let's see what else we can get about this I almost I almost want to talk about a little future type energy here that's kind of the direction I'm being pulled in I don't normally like to I mean I'm not I don't consider myself a fortune teller um, you know you are actively creating your reality so but with that said let's look at what's Let's look a little further here, a little forward in the future in the energies and see what could be manifesting, what could be coming through the pipeline. If there's anything that you see, okay, that you don't want to manifest, then obviously you can change it by changing your thoughts, changing your actions, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. But that's kind of the direction I'm being pulled in. So let's look a little bit into the future here. What's coming forward then in terms of this energy? What's coming forward in terms of this energy here for the collective? What is that? The Four of Cups. Didn't expect that. Oh, that's a lot. Okay, well, that's enough. <laughs> okay, well, we have the Eight of Wands again. All right. I'm still getting an energy of um, moving quickly. Ooh, okay. With the Nine of Cups here. There's Temperance again. Nine of Cups, Five of Wands, and Temperance. Okay, I'm going to take these. I'm going to take these. Nine of Cups, Five of Wands, Temperance. Oh, 
<laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, so hold on, guys. I may sneeze. <laughs> no. Okay. But anyway, um, this I do feel like this energy here of the Nine of Cups, the Five of Wands, and Temperance is related directly related to the Four of Cups here. And I'm not gonna lie, this is actually kind of making me laugh a little bit. This is kind of funny. Um, even though some of you are moving away from a certain individual or a certain circumstance or something like that, there's a little bit of inner conflict, Five of Wands, because you're moving towards wish fulfillment. Nine of Cups, all right? And there's more wish, I mean, these are both cards of wish fulfillment here. You have the star, okay? So what this, the star is saying is that you're working directly with the universe to manifest that which is you truly desire, okay? And you're coming into a place of greater balance here. And yet getting your wish fulfillment is for some of you um, creating some sort of inner conflict and it might be conflict with other people. I, what I feel like this is, it's like you're leaving, it's almost as if you're leaving someone behind and you don't, and you're like, I don't, do I really deserve this? Like, should I really be doing this? And it's like, well, yeah, of course you do. Because you're doing your work. You've been doing your work. Nine of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles. Okay? We all have free will here. So, don't feel bad about doing what it is you want to do or doing what it is you love to do. Especially if, you, if your heart is in the right place, if you have good intentions, there's nothing wrong with doing you, <laughs> you know? Okay, we have, wow, we have the rest of the clarification. We have the Ace of Swords, we have the Emperor, we have the Chariot, we have the Four of Swords, and we have the Wheel of Fortune. That's beautiful energy, you guys. There really is an energy of taking your power back. Staying strong in your convictions, staying strong in who you are. And even though, even though we have the chariot here, I am getting a very strong meditative energy and it is in fact coming from this four of swords. Okay, it's, it's as if what, I, what this feels like here is you are sitting in your power, sitting in your awareness, sitting in your knowledge, in your strength, the emperor with the ace of swords, and you are, you are moving, okay, with the chariot, right? But right now you're making mental moves, four of swords. Either you are working on gaining a new perspective um, or you are at a phase where you're integrating this new perspective, which could be why there is this four, uh, I'm sorry, this um, inner conflict, turmoil even. But... Well, no, not but. Um, also, it's as if what this feels like is you are either mentally preparing yourself or using your mental facilities in a much more constructive way rather than a destructive way here with this King of Swords in reverse in order to create this change. And I feel like this is a moment of just rest or surrender with the, with the Wheel of Fortune, what this feels like here is the wheel is turning, okay? And your desires or your, your what you, right, your desires are manifesting, right? Um, but it's as if you're keeping yourself in alignment, you're keeping yourself in check, you're keeping your emotions in check with the chariot energy, and you're allowing that to drive you through what it is you're, moving through this transitional phase that you're moving through of definitely whatever, also whatever it is you're looking to manifest. It's, it, I'm feeling an energy of it's like you, you're letting the universe drive you. Oh, okay. 
oh good I'm so glad this happened this way so um because I know exactly what this is and actually it's funny because I've actually kind of been doing this myself I mean duh but anyway I'm part of this collective that I'm channeling for so duh but anyway excuse me I'm gonna cough <coughs> excuse me that was gross um <laughs> um what was I saying? Oh, so I've been watching a lot of um, Abraham lately and uh, Abraham Hicks. And um, uh, I, I, it's funny because a lot of you guys have mentioned that you've been doing the same thing. That's really cool. But um, I love how al in alignment we all are. But something that Abraham has been saying recently has really struck me in a brand new way. And it's about, you know, how Abraham says that Esther sees herself as just a pointer, okay? Because basically what we're doing here is we are here experiencing the contrast so that we can create new things, right? And basically what happens is you you go through the pro you go through the process of experiencing the contrast which influences you to um, shoot, send off rockets of desire to manifest, okay? And so at that point, it's like you're saying, okay, we're gonna, I wanna go this way. And then your inner being, your higher self, whatever, the universe, whoever, however you wanna describe it, it says, okay, great, let's do it. We're doing it, we're going, right? And what you need to do at that point is like stay in the vortex or keep, stay in your energies of feeling good in alignment with you and just follow the path that your inner being is now has now paved to get you to where it is you want to go and as i was feeling through that and thinking about it i got an image in my head of the chariot the chariot right now um and it's and i was seeing it specifically in this deck here so i want to i'm going to find the chariot and I want, because this is literally what this feels like right now. Hold on a second, give me a second. Because it really, this deck is perfect in the way that it, it really, it makes sense to me now. Um, watch, it's going to be like the last card <laughs> all the way at the bottom. Nope, there it is. Okay. All right. So it's very much like this. Actually, I was seeing this side of the card. Because I'm seeing you moving down the path. Okay, or here, like this. So you can consider this, the individual in the, in the, the chariot, in the cart itself, that would be you as the pointer, right? And the two sphinxes here, which in this, in, in, in the tarot, the two sphinxes represent the balance of light and dark, good and bad, um, your, your, the balance of your emotions, which are your indicator that you're going in the right direction, that you're, you're, you're in alignment with yourself. The sphinxes here can be considered or seen as your inner being that's now driving you towards what it is you're, you're asking for, what it is you want to create. And that's what I'm seeing here. Ace of Swords, the Emperor, the Chariot. Having a better idea of what it is you want, staying in your power and saying, we're going this way, we're doing this, and moving forward with that, with the Chariot energy, okay? And staying out of the way. Staying out of resistant energy, four of swords, staying in a meditative state, staying calm, peaceful as much as you can in any given moment while things manifest, the wheel of fortune, while things change. I love that. And I'm so glad that came out because I've actually been wanting to, I've been wanting to describe it this way, you know? So cool, guys. This is really cool. So let's close the reading here with Oracle Guidance from, I'm going to use the Lightworker deck today. I was getting ready, setting up, and I was in my closet, you know, picking out my cards and, and whatnot, whatever, and I saw that, and I was like, hey, I haven't used that in a while. Let's do it. So here we're going to use that today. So, our oracle guidance for today. 
Also, <laughs> it's so funny. I did realize that I have a lot of Alana Fair Fairchild's <laughs> work. This is her, she has created this Lightworker Oracle. Um, she did, she, she created the Crystal Mandala. Yep, she did the, uh, the, the uh, Sacred Rebels deck that I use for the monthlies. She also created the Love Your Inner Goddess deck. I mean, I, I was just realizing that today. I thought that was really cool. Um, okay, but this is the Lightworker Oracle, also by Al Alana Fairchild. So let's get our Oracle guidance for today. Whoa, there it is, all right. Card number 31, okay. Alchemical Mutation. Yes, yes, all right, let's see what we've got here. Oh, I passed it. Okay. Your spiritual growth is challenging your mind, oh, I'm sorry, is changing your mind, body, and soul. It is very real. It is helping you fulfill all aspects of your divine destiny. It is awakening spiritual talents and attracting in new energies. This process will bring tremendous joy and satisfaction. Oh, I like that. Okay. Um, uh, all right, I'm just gonna read the whole thing. The body changes as light enters. Alchemy is catalyzed and transformation happens. Sometimes the appearance of the body changes. There will be change in how the body feels, responds, acts, and creates. Radiance increases. Lightness of being increases. If you have clairvoyant vision, you will see the increase in light as though the person is actually lit up from within. They are. Spiritual abilities become grounded in the body, and the person can channel healing energy just as naturally as they would set the dinner table. The spirit becomes a living reality in the body, and the material world is experienced as an extension of the divine light. This alchemy is an empowering gift of love. Symptoms of this process can, at times, be challenging. They may include headaches and other aches and pains, flu-like sy symptoms, and inexplicable and nearly overwhelming fatigue that lasts for days and then suddenly vanishes along with a surge of, of new energy. We may also experience pinging in the ears, increased sensitivity to light or sound, hormonal imbalance, and hot flushes, excessive sexual energy, mental obsession, or mood swings, aggression, and unintentionally harsh reactions to people. If you have been experiencing any of the above, any of the above and wondered if these or other unusual symptoms could be a direct result of increased spiritual energy affecting the body, then the answer is that this is very likely. You are encouraged to source whatever professional help support you need to take care of your body. Also, consider using the follow, uh, Okay, consider using the following pra simple practices to ease away the side effects of divine alchemy taking place in you. These simple practices include regular, getting regular rest, which has been um, a message for the collective for some time, you know, especially during this Virgo season that I think we just, we just crossed into Libra in Western. Or we're going to soon, I don't, I'm not sure exactly, but yeah. Additional sleep is a powerful way for the body and mind to heal and repair, integrate and reorganize. Allow time for physical exercise, which can help release excess energy, especially if you tend to feel mentally congested. Take some time away from meditation, spiritual studies or discussions and energy work. Instead, simply rest, I'm sorry, simply be in nature or rest. If you work with colors, then take a break for a short time, only working with very soft, subdued, white, or colorless light. If you have a tendency to push yourself with spiritual work, learning to take time off on regular occasions will help you recover more quickly and suffer less. Finally, working with cooling energy, not cold, but refreshing as a way to discharge excess heat, can be extremely beneficial to body and mind. You can do this by sitting in the shade or in a room that feels cool and relaxing, or even by cooling your hands before an air conditioner or fan. 
and then using your fingertips to transfer cool and healing energy by lightly touching your chest, back of neck, back of your head, ears, and forehead. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!